is here. Good day and welcome to our science class. How are you today? Great! Before we begin, let us sing a science song. Let's go learners! Ready for the song and one or two or three. Then sit properly. Science is ready. Lessons are all you. All you have to do. Listen to your teacher to learn something new. Hey, science time, science time. Oh, it's science time. They're ready. It's more fun, more activities. Hey, science time, science time. Oh, it's science time. I like it, I love it, I love my teacher too. Ready for the song, in one or two or three, then sit properly. Science is ready, lessons are all new, all you have to do. Listen to your teacher to learn something new. Hey, science time, science time, oh it's science time. They're ready, it's more fun, more activities. Hey, science time, science time, oh, it's science time. I like it, I love it, I love my teacher too. Great job, learners. Grade 6, I want you to observe it. Are all animals alike? If not, how do they differ from each other? Grade 6, we will discuss about the distinguishing characteristics of vertebrates and invertebrates. Please say, Grade 6, I can identify and describe the different characteristics of vertebrates and invertebrates. Great job, learners! Now, watch and listen carefully as we will explicitly discuss the distinguishing characteristics of vertebrates and invertebrates. Let's go, learners! Animals with backbones are called vertebrates. They have firm body because of the muscles that connect to their skeleton. There are five subgroups of vertebrates, namely fish, amphibians, reptiles, birds, and mammals. Fish. They live in water and take air and food from their surroundings. They have gills for breathing. They reproduce either by internal or external fertilization of the egg. They lay eggs. Their body temperature changes with the environment. Therefore, they are called cold-blooded. Some examples of animals under this group are milkfish or bangus, mudfish or dalag, tuna, and galunggong. Amphibians have moist, smooth skin that must remain moist in order to survive. Their moist skin allows exchange of gases. They have strong legs for walking, leaping, and swimming. The male amphibians fertilize the eggs laid by the female amphibians. Thus, fertilization is external. When young, they breathe through gills, and as adults, they breathe through their lungs. They are also cold-blooded animals. They live both in water and land. Some examples of this group are frog, lizard, and salamander. Reptiles are terrestrial animals that lay eggs. Their bodies are covered with scales or plates which are waterproof. Reptiles have lungs for breathing. Their body temperature can get with that of their surrounding and are therefore cold-blooded animals. Examples of reptiles are crocodile, alligator, 
sea turtle, monitor lizard, and snakes. Birds are usually flyers. However, birds like chickens fly. Some ostriches and penguins cannot fly at all. The body of a bird is covered with feathers. Their bodies are suited for flight and they have hollow bones that keep them light. Birds of prey are birds having strong and curved backs to their prey into pieces. They have talons or sharp claws to grasp and hold their prey. Eagles and hawks are birds of prey. They lay eggs, they have lungs, and they are warm-blooded animals. Mammals represent the most advanced group. They all have fur or hair and mammary glands. Mammals are usually born in a whole form. They develop inside the mother's womb. Mammals are the vertebrate groups to which men belong. They breathe with their lungs. Young are born alive and are fed with secretion by mammary glands of the mother. Mammals manage to live almost everywhere. Some examples of this are dogs, cats, rabbits, dolphins, whales, and bats. Animals without backbones are called invertebrates. They soft inner bodies which are held in shape by a flexible covering of outer cells or by a hard covering called an exoskeleton. However, the absence of a backbone does not hinder or affect their survival. In fact, Invertebrates make up roughly 97% of all animals on Earth, while vertebrates make up only 3%. Sponges are mainly celled invertebrates. The body of a sponge is full of small holes called pores, thus also called peripherans. A narrow canal connects the pores to one another. The shape of a sponge depends on its skeleton. However, some sponges do not have a skeleton. Sponges are the simplest form of animals. They spend their lives attached to rocks or underwater surfaces. Nidorians are formerly known as coelenterates. There are over 10,000 kinds of these marine animals. They are mostly found in the oceans no matter what depth or location, but few are found in fresh water. Nidarians are diverse, but can be classified into three groups, hydra, jellyfish, corals, and sea animals. These animals have stinging structures called nematoses. These are barbed threads tipped with poison, which are ejected like a dart to paralyze a prey or to defend the Snydarians against other animals. This is why jellyfish stings are very painful and can even be fatal. Flatworms are called such because of their flat and ribbon-like bodies. They do not have body cavities that contain developed circulatory organs. They feed by sucking our juices from the body of their prey. Their digestive cavity has only one opening for taking in food and excreting waste. Some flatworms such as tapeworms and flocks are parasitic. A tapeworm's body is a series of segments. Each segment has both male and female sex organs. This arrangement makes reproduction fast and convenient. They get nourishment from their host. Roundworms are also called nematodes. They have long, smooth, and rounded bodies, which often have rings, bristles, or ridges that aid in locomotion or protection. They are found in water, in the soil, or in other plants and animals as parasites. Segmented worms are also called annelids. They live in salt water, fresh water, and in the soil. They are the most complex among the worms. Their bodies are divided into segments. Examples of the animals in this group are the earthworms and leeches. The earthworm has no respiratory system but absorbs oxygen and gives off carbon dioxide through its thin skin which must be kept moist. 
Mollusks are invertebrates with soft bodies. Some mollusks have a hard shell to protect their bodies, while others in it have this protective shell. Among the mollusks are the snails, mussels, squids, and octopus. Echinoderms are invertebrates that are found only in the sea. They are covered with rough and spiny skin. Most echinoderms have thousands of tube feet on the underside of their bodies. This allows them to catch prey and cling to rocks. Most echinoderms have a great number of suckers. Among the echinoderms are starfish, sea urchin, and sea cucumbers. Arthropods are joint-legged invertebrates that can be grouped according to the number of legs they have. Insects are arthropods that have six legs. Arachnids are arthropods that have eight legs. Crustaceans are arthropods that have ten legs. Mariapods are arthropods that have more than ten legs. Among the arthropods are insects, arachnids, crustaceans, crabs and ants great job learners i hope you have understood the distinguishing characteristics of vertebrates and invertebrates it's a wrap up time learners let us test if you have understood very well our lesson get your paper and pen let's go number one which of the following is the characteristics of mammals? A. They have four legs. B. They creep and live on land. Letter C. They feed their young with milk. And letter D. They have scales and live on the water. And the answer is letter C. Number two. What group of vertebrates breathe through gills when they are young and breathe through their lungs as adults? A. Fish B. A reptile C. A mammal or letter D. An amphibian And the answer is letter D. The following statements describe the characteristics of vertebrates except A. Vertebrates are warm-blooded animals. B. Vertebrates are animals without a backbone. Letter C. Vertebrates have mammary glands to feed their young. Letter D. Vertebrates are a group of animals with an internal skeleton. And the answer is letter B. Number 4. In what way do amphibians differ from reptiles? A. Amphibians can crawl. B. Amphibians are oviparous. C. Amphibians have backbones. Letter D. Amphibians can live both on land and in water. And the answer is letter D. Number 5. Snail, butterfly, bee, and clam are examples of invertebrates. What distinguishing characteristics that these animals possess? A. Lack of a cranium. B. Absence of backbone. C. Presence of cranium. Letter D. Presence of backbone. And the answer is letter B. Great job, learners. Congratulations. I am so proud. Of you. And that's all for now, learners. I hope that you have learned a lot from our lesson for today. This is once again Teacher Morlan, your teacher on the go. Till next time, see ya!